All right, guys, we've got a injector replacement job. Very busy here, but we're gonna try and show you what we can as far as injector replacement job goes on the 1KZTE. Um, a lot of things on this vehicle. It's a 120 Prado, 1KZ. A lot of things very similar to uh, the 120 with a 1KD, like things like that pipe, the heater pipe at the back and the brackets, they look the same even. Intercoolers, slightly different, very similar, but slightly different, I think. Unless it's just got a different cover on it. No, it is slightly different. <clears throat> um, haven't talked a lot about 1KZs because we rarely see them anymore, right? So when we started talking more about vehicles, trying to help you guys out when we realised we couldn't do them all, um, and such the such a widespread problem. that Look, there's lots of people that are good and know how to work on cars, but there's even more that don't and that butcher and ruin your vehicle. So we thought it's best to show you some procedures and show you reality so you can decide if it's careful who you take it to or if it's you're just going to risk it and take it anyway. Um, now obviously this is the first time we've worked on this vehicle so I'm just going to point out so wiring loom coming around. So we've got a dual battery system and the positive wire okay let me just get this right mm, and the negative okay so the negative from the battery here instead of just going to the body there comes all the way around the back of the engine unless I'm yeah there's two there's two oh it could be right I don't know look I don't know but look I'd have to trace the wire more closely what is going on putting the earth to the alloy of the engine okay the whole body of the car's earth guys just let's be clear I know it's off topic but the whole body of the car's earth so you just earth that to the body of the vehicle if you're going to bring it all the way around here bring it back to the earth point at the battery here right right there that's the best place you can take it if you're going to take it a long distance but yeah alloy is not as good conductor it'll do the job but there's no need to run it all around there if we follow that back i believe it's that wire there now that might come from inside the car or i might go i don't know look i really don't know where it's going i hate to see that's an anderson plug and it's been run all the way from the back to come up here to go on the top uh, radiator hose housing Anyway, whatever, that's going to be in our way, so we're going to remove that off there, get that out of the way. Um, so some of the first things we're going to do, uh, we need to remove the intercooler, which is pretty straightforward. So, you know, we're going to remove these vacuum lines, the map filter, unplug the map sensor, all these plugs around here, you can see the few plugs and whatever. Pretty straightforward, really. Once you do that, there's a couple of, well, you've got to get the cover off the intercooler as well. There's a 10 mil there, there's another 10 mil there. There's a couple of sort of hidden ones, even more hidden in this one because of that um, wiring that's there. But there's a couple of 10 mils hidden up behind the back of that plastic cover. So we get that off. Then we're going to get to the uh, mounting bolts with the intercooler, which is that 12 mil there. And there's another one at the back on the other side, actually. But yeah, we'll just have a look. You need to get that clamp, top clamp on the hose is the way to do it. If that's too hard for you, you can undo those four bolts, but don't over tighten them. And then you'll need a new gasket for that. See the gasket, it clips in there. You might get away with reusing it, but a lot of people don't, and a lot of people over tighten those bolts. So I'm going to say it again don't over tighten those four 10 mil bolts, or if you decide to do it that way, which is fine, whatever whatever suits you, you know. Um, yeah, the other mounting bolt, a little bit fiddly to get to. It's, uh, I'm going to have to sort of tuck you around in here to show you. See, that's it there. All right, where's that? That's yeah, it's the back behind the intercooler there. You'll figure it out. Bit fiddly to get to, 3 8 drive, uni joint, whatever. So, they're your two mounting bolts, you have to take these, well you're going to take both the clamps off, but the main one at the moment is the top clamp. See they've got these little clips on them, so you can actually squeeze them together and they clip in and they stay released. If they haven't been damaged, if everything's working properly, right? So, um, get the intercooler off, pretty straightforward. If you can't figure out getting the intercooler off from that four minutes so far, and also figuring out, put your earth somewhere else, but... If you can't figure that out from that part of the video, your tip is don't do this job because the intercooler is easy part of the job. Glow plugs and injectors still pretty easy as well. So I'll just go to the next step briefly before we, and what we're going to do after this section of the video, we're going to go and get that intercooler off. But next is going to be your injectors are down there. They're not inside the engine. With this one, we're going to take the valve cover off and check the valve clearances also. We may or may not be able to include that in the video. So. We've been cautious trying to keep it shorter, but every word that I say is more information. So, which means the longer it goes, the better it is, the more information you've got. So, 
um, injectors are there. With these ones, you don't have to replace the fuel pipes. You can gently, and I mean gently, all the clamps need to come off and gently bend the fuel pipes back a little bit to undo that top nut there. Pretty straightforward job unless something goes wrong and they get seized and you gotta be careful with the glow plugs and a few things like that. So we're gonna go ahead now and get the intercooler off and I'll let you know the next step once it's off. All right, here we go. Let's get that intercooler cover off and I'll get this bit of wire out of the way. I don't know what's going on. I really don't know why there's a wire here connected onto the uh, thermos. No, it's not the thermos, it is uh... Zip tied as well. Well, at least it's zip tied. I'm gonna get the side covers. Make sure I cut the right wire. Is it the blue wire or the red wire? <laughs> All right. Okay, so that's now out of the way. I'll just tuck it over here for now. find a better place for it later or something, eh? Okay. That may go in to run the fridge or something, I don't know. It's not doing anything at the moment by the feel of it. There's no... And I'll just sit the bolt and the washer back in the hole, even though we'll probably use this bolt and washer in another hole somewhere else, putting it back together. Right, that's how to get the cover off, that's the easy part. Get the uh, map filter out of the bracket. Careful with these plugs, just enough to get it. Disconnected the uh, map filter from the bottom of the map sensor. Taken off the other vacuum line, the two plugs. Remove this clip out of there. Oh, come out, you released. Come out, you bastard. Did I just swear? Is that a swear word? Well, you know, that's what happens. Gently tuck those out of the way there. And you'll get out of your way and you can continue with the uh, clamps and the mounting bolts. Anyway, guys, that's what we're doing. Get those few clamps off, as we said. The mounting bolts for the intercooler and she'll be coming off. All right, so we've got the intercooler off. What's next, what's next? Okay, so we already made a, you know, obviously I've done a few plugs and whatever. We're going to take this rubber duct or boot off. We're going to undo the couple of bolts at each side. You can see two there. Same couple around this side. Take that throttle body off, that whole assembly off and get it out of the way. You have to do a couple other clamps and clips and stuff like that. You can see we're going to take those white clips, just unscrew those off the top of the glow plugs. They are the glow plugs for those that don't know. 
the little nut on top. We're going to undo those, put those aside, take that whole that black rail off. Now there's a bracket at the back here that gets in the way of the rear injector. There's a bracket here, this one here. Okay, and we need to get to that rear injector down there, which we can get to from behind to do the injector. Oh, right, so there you go, clear through there. It's not in the way, but it's number four glow plug that it's in, this bracket's in the way of. So with some experience, what I've worked out is there's two 10 mils down the back here to undo this bracket, right? And I can tell you right now, I'm just gonna have a feel of them. They've probably never been off in 15 years or whatever it is. They are usually very tight and very hard to get off. Now, it's not about quality tools because using quality tools, what happens sometimes, I'll tell you straight, the whole thing, the whole head snaps off, the stud, the bolt breaks, okay? They're that tight and kind of like seized in there. That would be seized, I believe. Um, so what happens when it's seized in there, uh, basically what happens it busts off, and then if you were to go for the second bolt... Sorry guys, uh, I had a phone call I had to attend to. Anyway, um, now this is the deal, right? Like I said, if those bolts break off, you're in trouble because you can't get in down behind there to re-tap, you know? It's uh, way down there, so I'll just try and show you where they are. They're really, really hard. I'll try and show you. Well, you know, they're down there anyway. So you can have a go at them, but if they don't come off, what I'm suggesting is, it might sound dodgy, but this is what I do. So I'm, I'm Captain Dodgy. What I do is, I get in here with a shifter and I hook it over this bracket here and I bend it up, sort of, um, you know, you're pushing upwards but it bends it back a little bit enough to get to number four glow plug and take note of the angle it's on before you bend it, right? Have a good look at it and go, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, like that. And all you do, you just bend it back again. You're only going to do this once every 200,000 Ks. It's not like you're going to break the bracket, you know, it's only going to happen a few times. Look, up to you, I'm just giving you the information because I don't want to have to pull the head off because I insisted on taking a bracket off doing the right thing. So what we're going to do, we're going to put the shifter on that and we're going to give that a tweak backwards. We're going to do the glow plugs first and then we'll tweak, you know, that's with it bent backwards just a little bit. Only needs to go back, look, you know, look at the angle, right? See the angle of the dangle, what I'm talking about, right? You could almost get in there with a uni joint. We just need to give ourselves an extra five or 10 mil. We're not even, I won't call it bending it, it's reworking it, it's tweaking it, but we do need to bring it back to the right angle so when we bolt it back on again. So go ahead, those people that want to say it's dodgy and everybody else can go, mate, that's a great idea because I'm sick of pulling heads off to reach. Because if you break one bolt, well, you've got one left, one will probably do the job, I'll say, but is the second one going to come out? Because if they both break, you've got no bracket and then you're in trouble. So something to have a think about. We're going to go ahead and remove the throttle body, all those plugs, the white caps, the rail on the uh, return line. Okay, so this is ready to lift off. You can see the bolts are out. Right. See each side, like I said, a couple of other plugs and bits and pieces. We might have missed one. We're just sort of trying to get it done for you. Let's go ahead and lift it off. There it is. Let's just have a quick look in there before we go. Let's have a quick sneaky look. Oh yeah, a bit messy. That's typical of these. And if you look in here, see the hole around the gasket there? Most of the worst is what you can see right, you know, around the edges there, you know? You know? See what I mean as you get, look, this is where it's coming in. That's your EGR valve at the back there. It's coming in that hole at the back there. I'll try and hold it still for you for a minute because I know you like that. How's that? Have a good look at that volcano. I know it looks really bad, but it's not. The worst of it, again, even more so on these than the uh, 1KDs, the worst of it is right here at this opening, what you're looking at, right there. Right, so we just give that a bit of a clean up around there. It's not usually worth taking the manifold off, but we can if you like. What a lot of people do, they put a full blanking plate in down there where that gasket is, that's up to you. And what a lot of, some people do is, see the vacuum lines on the EGR valve? They'll put a bull bearing blocking that so it won't work anyway, okay? So we're gonna disconnect a couple other wires and plugs here. As I said, these white caps, we're gonna take this nut off so we can get this wiring loom. We'll undo that plug just to get this wiring loom right out of the way, give ourselves a bit more room so we can see what we're doing. So that's our next step, guys. That plug, those white caps, and taking this line off by undoing the top nut only underneath that cap. Let's do that. All right, guys, so this is the dodgy part, right? Now, this is where some people are gonna go, oh, dodgy, whatever, and I don't care, right? You can bust both the bolts off and pull the head off you like, I'm not risking it. Anyway, um, 
So, we, we don't use shifters for many things, and the type of job shifters are used for in workshops, this is what they're for, and that's where the shifter goes, right? Whatever brand you like, get it nice and tight on there. And all we're gonna do, we just wanna tweak it a little bit to get to that, get to that glow plug. So I'm gonna try and do this while holding a camera, right? It could be a bit, just literally wanna go. Like that, all right, and that, that probably gives us enough room to get to that glow plug. See, straight up and down, no problem, that's what we want, because that needs to come out and in nice and square. You can see the angle on the bracket, we just need to bring it back down again where it was before we put it back together, and then to access the injector, see, because now it's kind of getting more in the way of the injector, right? So that's why we do the glow plugs separately and first. All right, let's get that last white cap off. Right, right. in case you missed it, because I just did the other ones quickly. It's a bit of a twist and undo anti-clockwise and pull at the same time to get those off, right? And when you put them on, it's just push them. We'll show you putting them back together anyway, I think. I think we will, that's the plan. Right, now we're gonna undo the, the other nuts off the top there, right? To take this rail off. Look, we can get to that now. That's awesome. Amazing. Get those nuts off. Get this rail off. Beautiful. Right, so we've got that top rail off. We sprayed a bit of inox on all the uh, threads and that. Let them soak a little bit while we remove this top clamp here. And we're going to remove that black clamp down there as well. So we'll allow the lines. We're not going to bend the lines. Again, it's called reworking. We're just going to slightly manoeuvre. Is probably a better word. Rework those lines flex them we're flexing them we're not bending them right to be clear be very careful don't be bending lines okay so certainly don't want to be, i've seen people bending things and whatever so but we're not taking those fuel lines off not any yet anyway we're just preparing we're going to get the glow plugs out next one other thing you got to watch out for i'll give you the tip see this wiring loom this one's good but they can rub on the valve cover quite badly and actually rub through so check yours might be worth putting a bit of heater hose underneath it like that to stop it rubbing um, we're going to take the valve cover off this one as well to check the valve clearances as i mentioned earlier maybe we're disconnecting the battery and disconnecting your alternator wiring to get this whole wiring loom straight off out of your way or you can work around it whatever you prefer it can be done either way okay so i'm just using a 3-8 drive with an extension with a 30 mil deep reach to uh, get these out this one wasn't too hard to crack loose and it's not too hard to come out now you need to watch your procedure right because these can be tight this one's going to come out easy and the precaution is once it gets toward the end we want to make sure that um, we don't bang it around bringing it out because we don't want the tip if it is about to fall off we don't want it falling off so at this point we want to get our socket off so I've got to put the camera down sorry but we're going to get the socket off and carefully uh, bring that glow plug out without banging around so we don't lose the tip off it. Okay, so on this one, the way we've decided to do it is there's a couple of clips there on the wiring loom you just remove, and same over here, a couple of clips and clamps, and you can just put the wiring loom forward so that you can work around to get the valve cover off, but we're not doing that yet because as you can see, dirt and stuff. Just thought I'd mention that while I'm, we've got the first glow plug out, the tip's intact, which is good, so we're just going to move on to the next ones, and... For your information, it is a 12 mil. And let's see, I'm gonna see if I can do it one-handedly. Is this Captain Risky or what? Yeah, no, I'm not gonna do it. I want two hands on it. So guys, I can't video this. I need two hands on it. But if you're not confident doing something like this, because you know things can go pear-shaped, then obviously make contact and I can uh, hook you up with our 4 Before Diesel Workshop partners that can take care of this sort of work. We do supply only brand new genuine injectors and glow plug kits for this job. Okay, so all good news. This one has uh, come loose just like they usually do. I'll say usually, and I should be able to get the rest of it out by hand. And I'll show you what I mean. I just want to be really gentle lifting it out. Look at that. Tip, you can, hard to see. I'll show you on the bench later, but that one's not falling off either. Quite often, literally, they you just put them and they fall off. So if you knocked it on the way out, you could drop it in the engine, which is going to be painful. You can tell by looking at the end of them if it fell off on the way out or not. Anyway, let's get the other two out, eh? 
Just nicely. Oh my god, text messages. That's what they'll sound like generally. Sometimes they uh, they crack loose and they get tied again. That's where you're going to have problems that can happen. These ones have been very good to us, which is uh, what you want. And it does happen most of the time. But the reason you want to take it to someone that does this more regularly than yourself is if things do go pear-shaped, then they can take care of it. Even on something as simple as a you know glow plug replacement, even if you're not doing the injectors yet. Uh, every 100,000 cases we recommend replacing these glow plugs because the tips do fall off and it can result in a lunched engine. Anyway, pretty boring. We're just going to get these two glow plugs out. Alright, so those came out clean. So we're not even going to delay or clean or blow or suck or anything with this one because it is so clean in and around the hole. New ones are going straight in. Alright, so this is really good news. Just quickly, we use the HKT glow plugs made in Japan. But um, that's these suckers. Look how beautiful they are. How nice are they? I really like them. I like made in Japan. I like quality. And they look OEM type quality. The old ones, this is a lucky engine, right? It's an old 1KZ that's never had the glow plugs changed. I don't believe looking at them. I don't believe they have. It felt like factory to me. And look, all the tips are there. We're just going to have a quick little test. And you know what? They weren't even about to fall off. Look at that, eh? Anyway... New ones going in and the tips on the new ones won't be falling off, but change them every 100,000. Let's get them in back, back in position. Okay, just before we put the glow plugs in, we've just put a really small amount of copperies on the thread. And uh, that's the stuff we use for a lot of applications, not everything. But uh, getting the glow plugs back in the hole now. We've got the four glow plugs sitting back in position, pretty straightforward. As you can see, any excess copper grease comes out the top, that's fine. We'll leave that there. It might get washed up when we finish the job. It'll probably stay there, doesn't matter. High temperature stuff, so it's probably just going to stay there. Um, now we're going to nip those down just nicely with a 3 8 drive by hand. And 13 Newton meters, I believe, is the torque setting. I've got to go and double check that because that's what I do. I suggest you do the same, don't trust me. So, we've uh, talked all the glow plugs up to 13 Newton meters. I'm sure you can figure out how to do that. We don't need to demonstrate. And if you can't, once again, contact me or one of our 4 before 4 Diesel Workshop partners for those professional repairs. Okay, so as I said, the um, glow plugs are torqued up, they're in position 13 Newton meters. Um, and it's now time so that we can get to the injectors because we tweak that bracket here back a little bit It's now a little bit in the way of the lines and that so it's time to bring it back We no longer need it. We can get to the the rail and the top nut here uh, With this back where it's meant to be so what we do one hand with the camera one hand with a shifter Captain dodgy here Right what he does he puts the shifter on like that and just goes And bring it back where it was me. So simple as that, right? So it wasn't a hard, much easier than taking the two bolts out. And if the bolts break off, well, if one breaks, you've got one, it might be okay. And if then you try the other one and it breaks, you've got none, and then you're pulling the head off. So that's why we do this, if I haven't been clear enough. All the angles right to mount the intercooler. We can still get to the glow plug for the rail, and now we're going to get the injectors out. Let's get the injectors out. We better crack these uh, top fuel line nuts if i remember correctly 14 millimeters you might want like a 14 mil crow's foot for this there's other ways to do things but they're not going to be super tight they should come off fairly easy let's get those undone oh, see pretty nicely pretty nicely they come undone Beautiful. So we'll get all four of those lines off. At this point, we've cracked the fuel lines loose. That can all just sit there for a while. We've decided we want to clean up this so that we don't end up touching it, leaning in it, or anything by accident. Um, and we're going to cover it up, okay? Because we don't want any mess. We want to keep this side of the job over the fuel side nice and clean. So we're going to clean all this up next. So you can go ahead and do that. You can clean the throttle body now as well if you like, or you can do it later whenever you want. Uh, obviously it needs to be cleaned to put it back together once we get the injectors changed, so we're going cleaning. So what we're doing now, we're just getting the fuel lines off gently and just gently reworking them a little bit to the side, just enough to clear the injectors, okay? 
same thing here one by one we're going to do that and then we've got to get this next nut off that rusty colored nut that's what's retaining um, the fuel return which is this section here okay so we're going to go ahead and take these all these off and give them a bit of a tweak like that now we can get to these nuts here and take these nuts off completely so we've got the fuel lines flexed out of the way and now we're re removing that nut that I just you can't see it now but and they're about from memory again I've got to check these things I'm getting old you know I think they're about 30 newton meters uh, had a bit of a discussion with someone recently about that they thought it was something different maybe or there was a few different torque settings and to be quite honest between all the numbers thrown out there and you know i think it's as i said i think the injectors are 54 these might be about 30 but i could be wrong they could be 40 somewhere around there and um yeah the the last the fuel line i think is 15 but look i've got to go check the numbers you know but i think it's 54 30 15. now we've got those nuts off you can see gone 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 right don't worry about the fuel lines too much, everything's clean, we're going to give those a bit of a clean wipe before they go anywhere near our brand new injectors. Um, we've got to slip that fuel return line off, it can be a bit of a fiddle because you've got that fuel, it goes down this way, which we've disconnected the hose down here, right, you can follow that down, you can disconnect whichever end you like. Got an assistant here who's going to try and lift it off for me while I can sort of try and hopefully show you how fiddly it is and it's a slow process you just bring it up slowly work them one by one and uh, try and keep it even you know each one and you can see the number two is going to be the hard one because that hose there and look sometimes even though it's harder to take the hose off at that end sometimes it does pay I've done it both ways and it depends which way the clamp sits let's just have a look see where the clamp's sitting it's creating a problem so at the very least I think we're gonna to have to stop and move the clamp down so guys just pointing out that's your difficulty getting that return line on and off, is that clamp there. So we're going to go and have a bit of a play around with that hose and that clamp. And uh, obviously we're just going to lift it up. It's not a big deal, but that's your slight difficulty there. So plan B. Plan A on this job was take the hose off at the other end because it's easy to get to. But as you saw, it was a bit of a fiddle. It all comes down to which way the clamp is on that line there. So now we've got the hose off at this side, and now it's all clear. So we should be able, if you want to go ahead and try and, whoop, bang. Don't worry about that. That's my head hitting the light. So <laughs> we'll leave that in there, right? That's how we roll, guys. It's what it is. Edit that out. Nobody swore, did they? Mm. Mm. I might have. Uh, oh well, you get that. Like I said, reality. Sorry about that if we did. What I went, oh, sh shoot. Okay, there it is. We're going to place that on the bench for now, clean it all up later. And next is, now when you're taking the injectors out, don't split the injector. It's not that top rusty nut, it's the lower one. Okay, the one underneath that isn't rusty, right? All right, we're going to get the correct tools for the job, start getting them out, and let you know more shortly. Okay, now it's time to remove the injectors. It's a 21 mil deep socket, short extension, and we're using a half inch, a kind of my favorite, very old, 30 year old, first year apprentice, El Cheapo toolkit. That's still going, that one, look at that, eh? Let's give it a, see if they come undone. They should come undone fairly straightforward like that. Very good. And if they are tight, there's other ways to do things. Usually these come out alright, so I'm not going to go into too much of the possibilities. As I said, if you're not confident with this sort of stuff, you get someone that knows what they're doing. Make contact in a text message Monday morning from 8am. Hook you up with one of our full before diesel workshop partners, you know, depending where you are. That's why you include your full name, vehicle details, what area you're from, please, is another important one. And obviously what it requires what you're after, we need to be careful of that uh, actuator there, that's all good. Beautiful, very good. We're gonna get the injectors out now. Oh, look at that baby, Ooh, little injector baby, there it is, oh yeah. Okay, next, next. So it's a lot more straightforward than a 1KD, okay guys? 
Show you the hole there. It needs a bit of cleaning. We need to get those seats out. There's a little seating washer there. Bit of a clean up. There's actually a, a seat that's pressed into the head. You don't need to change that unless you've had some other weird issues. It's not normal part of the job, right? Just down in there, there will be a seating washer. If it didn't come out with the injector, let's go and have a look to the bench and uh, have a look at the okay, injector. So here's the injectors on the bench. That's what they look like. You can have a look at the base of them for your own information. All right. Uh, I'd say the rear one may be a bit more overfueling than the others, but it was blowing a bit of smoke on starter. Let's have a look at the vehicle and get the seats out. Right, so if you look closely down in there, you'll see that little seat there. No slipping on the, uh, and you just basically get underneath it with your under over, whichever way you like, and pick it up with your little pick like that and bring it out just like that. Okay, we'll place that there. All right, and you can see what you've got left down there. There is these other, I don't know, I'm not sure what you would call them, but you don't take them out, guys. That you just vac and polish up that seating surface so it's nice and clean. The black carbon's only on the inside of the seat now, so it doesn't really matter, but we're gonna clean it up anyway. It only takes a few minutes. Um, we're not spraying anything in there. We're gonna vac those debris out first. Then we're gonna use some rags and a small dowel to clean up those ports to get them nice and clean before we place the new seats in and the new injectors back in there. Alright, so like doctor surgery, number two coming out now. Oh, look at that, beautiful. Nice. Nurse suction. Could you please pass me the pick? Now I need the scissors. I need the uh, scalpel. Uh, look at that. Oh, yes. Oh, no suction. Thank you. Oh, I can't get the camera in there without getting in his way. But you get the go. You get the picture, guys. Get the seats out. Clean it all up. Now, don't worry about the oil and everything outside the hole. But see in the hole, just all the debris. It's hard to see because of the flash there. It kind of looks. Doesn't look right. The, the shiny silver bit doesn't matter either, right? It's down the middle where the seat goes, and the seat goes on the outside of that black stain, right? And it's pretty clean. We haven't even cleaned it. It's mainly those debris that you want to get out, right? Any bits of chunky bits of carbon that are going to cause problems. But we're going to go ahead and polish those seats up anyway, because that's how we like it. Right, so here we've got the new babies and the old babies, right? So obviously these are the old babies over here. The old 15 year old or whatever they are, what is it, oh, four, five, six, I don't know, anyway. About 15 years old. Um, these seating washers, they're kind of, they're much like a lot of sump plug washers on some vehicles. Uh, Subaru used to use a, a crush washer type washer, all right? Have a closer look at the new ones if you like, all right? I don't know what you can see there. All right, there's a flat side and a rounded side. I'm going to put it out there and say, in my opinion, they'd work either way. Um, from factory, I believe the rounded side is the side against the head the way they come out But um, if you've got any information there feel free to put your two cents worth in if you've put them either way Either way this way that way or never really bothered to take any notice or whatever because you know at the end of the day They look much the same at both ends. You've got a flat surface. It's the same type of material Against the head. It's not alloy. There is a there is another seat that goes in uh, which, as I said, you don't need to replace unless you've something really bizarre's going on. And we do have a set of those here for that emergency situation, but never seen it. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do now? The seats are all clean in the head, the little the little seating area for these washers. We're going to carefully sit these washers in place, and then we're going to put these injectors back in. Maybe a little bit of uh, copper is on the threads again. And then of course that return line. Now when you get your new injectors, see here, this black thing here, this is a spacer. That comes out, that's where your fuel return line goes in. So you take your cap off, your nut off. Once you're ready to install your return line, your return line sits on top of that washer. Return line goes there, your nut goes on, and then your fuel line's gonna go on last, all right? So all the uh, ports are cleaned up, and we're just gonna lower these seats into the port very carefully on the end of the pick, and once it gets in position, it'll get to the next little bend on that hook, and it'll just be 
and it's hard to show you guys, but you get the picture. We're going to make sure they're sitting flat. One, two, three, four. Put those seats in, then the injectors are going in next. Right, so this is what it looks like. The seats are in there. Like I said, don't worry about the debris around it. As long as it's all clean and this, it's hard to see with the flash, the light and all that, isn't it, right? But seats sitting there nice and clean. We've got our new injectors ready to go in. A little bit of copper is on those as well. And gently, in they go. Anyway, I don't need to show you how to screw an injector in, guys. Can I do it? All right, as you can see, those injectors, those brand new genuine injectors that are ready to last, as per brand new ones, did for 15 years, for another 15 years, are in position. And we're about to hit them with a torque wrench. 54 newton meters. Again, remember, guys, it's definitely down on that silver nut down there, not on this one up here. That's a lower torque setting. I believe, if I remember correctly, somewhere in the 40s, and that will over tighten the inject. That's you know to take the injector apart, which you're not doing. Do not put a spanner on that part there for any reason. It's down the bottom. Okay, the 21 mil. We're going to do 54 newton meters on all four of those. We're not going to demonstrate. You need know to use a torque wrench. Quick demonstration. You can see this one. We've taken the cap, the nut, the spacer. The return line's going to sit on top of this new washer here. The nut's going to go back on after the return line, and the cap's going to go back on too, so nothing gets to that nice clean new injector at this point in time because I just want to give the end of the pops a bit of a clean up before they go near the injectors. Even though they're in clean area and nothing's touching them, we just want to be to be sure to be sure. All right, so while one person's holding the fuel lines back safely, the fuel return line's getting set in position, and then the retaining nuts go back on, and as soon as those nuts are on, the caps are on, and then we can let go of those fuel lines that see. We've got the assistant back here holding so that those fuel lines, even though they're clean, Let's imagine they've got a small bit of debris on them from, you know, for whatever reason. If that goes near those injector inlets, it could get into the injector and cause problems. Unlikely, but it could. So we're going to take the precautions so that we don't have any of these problems or question marks for the next 15 years. Okay, so one of the nuts down here is going on. Quite a little bit fiddly to get to. A bit of teamwork. Got hands here, hands there, you know. What's this? A five person job, mate. Look at this. Right, and then the caps can go on those two. Beautiful, all safe and sealed again. Same thing at the front here, guys. Bada bing, let you know the next step. Guys, this is where it's at. So we've got the back two on, and I'll just recap what we've done. What's happening here is the injectors went in, they got torqued to 54, the return line went on carefully. That nut there, that black nut under the fuel line, 30 newton meters. And we're just putting that fuel line on. Number four's done, number three's done. We clean the fuel lines before we put them onto the injectors and take these caps off, right? They've all been cleaned up, so it's all Mickey Mouse clean, and there's no contamination getting to the system. The next step is we're gonna put the torque wrench on. So we have torqued the injectors to 54. We have torqued the return line. That's this black nut here, 30 Newton meters. And this nut here on the fuel line is gonna be 15 Newton meters. That's what's happening now. Okay, then the fuel system sealed. We'll refit the clamp here on the side of the manifold. That fuel return hose still needs to go onto that fuel return line there. Don't forget that. Uh, then we're going to get this valve cover off, which we'll start working on any moment. Back to you shortly with some more info. At the moment, 15 newton meters. Fourteen mil, yeah. Mhm. Mm That's triple checked. Anyway, you've seen enough. Get your pipes talked up if you're up to this stage. Right now, uh, we've got that uh, on the glow plug. The rail sitting back on top. The nuts. We don't use torque settings. It's something really low, like, I'm not sure if it's four or five or six, but for some glow plugs, you can crack the insulation down here 
doing that and not this brand but i'm not going to bag other brands i just like using these glow plugs i like them in so many ways never had a problem but i use a like a hand screwdriver type with a 10 mil socket on the end i recycle the old nuts i prefer the old nuts and i use these red caps so basically just nip it nicely by hand a very light amount of pressure no pressure at all whatsoever really won't even call it pressure and then these caps just push on and hand tighten then we need to refit this fuel return line down here is coming back on um, and we're going to get the valve cover off, which is about to happen right, here. Right, so, uh, got the valve cover off, right, we got the valve cover off, and all, at this point all I want to say is, this is what it looks like in a 1KZ, right, it's just a single camshaft, you've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valves to check, it's a different system, they don't have the bucket, slightly different system, but, um, at the end of the day, the main thing I want to point out is look how filthy black it is. This is blacker than any 1KD, and these do this, and it's because it's a different type of uh, injection, old school kind of diesel system. And the book says oil changes every 5,000 Ks. I can tell you by looking at this, not only the color of the blackness, but the slight buildup in the oil of soot. See the bolt heads and, you know, like sandpaper type thing? It's not bad, don't get me wrong. This isn't the worst one I've ever seen, but more oil changes, guys, mate. It's the lifeblood of the engine. It's gold. Oil changes are cheap. Keep the engine clean. Look after your engine. It's a lot cheaper than an engine, and these engines do eventually wear out. They're not as good as the 1KDs. They are very good, but they're not as good, and they've got their own problems. More oil changes, please, is what I want to say here. Then we're going to get in here and check the valve clearances, right? We've got other videos on how to check valve cleaner. The same, you know, what different bucket. Well, I'll show you a little bit though. More oil changes. Okay, guys, so this was a mainly change the injectors and glow plugs video, sort of how to do that with a few tips and tricks to make things a bit easier for you. As I said earlier in the video, probably more than once, if you don't feel confident, don't do it. Contact me. I'll either do it or I'll hook you up with one of our 4 Before Diesel Workshop partners. So we've got the valve cover off, all good news. The valve clearances at the moment are all um, in check. Um, we've got a little bit more cleaning of the valve cover, the head area to do along this side here. You can see we've been down that side there and um, we're gonna pop that valve cover back on and we're also doing a timing belt. So we've got the timing belt cover off as well. You can see all the injectors and everything's back in. I'm not sure where we're up to with that, but of course we're gonna connect this third glow plug with the wiring loom and whatever and put the throttle body back on we'll do that soon but at the moment if you want to see how to check valve clearances search my other videos um, it's very simple on the 1kz compared to the 1kd the same thing but just there's less of them and uh, easier access as i said more oil changes and uh, we're going to get this valve cover back on all right so valve covers back on if you want to know the torque specification i believe is nine newton meters there's a little crust tube in there anyway you could do it by hand it's hard to go wrong but if you don't know what you're doing it's always best to use torque specs um what's next we're going to get that throttle body and everything back on over there that sort of opposite order to what it came off all right all right all right here it goes it's going back together we've got the valve cover on a few nuts and bolts and clamps you know you, you, like i said we move a few wires and clamps just move what you need to move out of the way but throttle body's going back on now four bolts all those clips and clamps and bits and pieces need to go back on in place you can see the one for the glow plug that wire's done I don't know what else can tell you now. It's pretty well put it back together in the reverse order. Make sure you don't miss any plugs, vacuum lines. Up to you if you're putting the plate in. There's obviously a bit more work in doing that or just blocking the vacuum line or you're leaving it how it is because it's not too bad. Whatever you like. Once that's all done and you're happy and you've triple checked everything and it's all clean and happy, then you put the intercooler back on and hit the go button and you're just like you were before except even better as long as you didn't forget anything or stuff anything up. A little bit of bonus information on this one, like uh, talking about checking the valve clearances, changing the timing belt, and again, like checking valve clearances, we've got separate videos on that, okay, so if you're going to change your timing belt, I always suggest, you know, you can buy the big front engine kit off us, that's the timing belt, the idler, the tensioner, the cam seal, which you can see in this case it's not leaking, and we say if it ain't broke, don't fix it, there's no leak there, I don't know if it's been changed before or not, but you know, these drive belts, there's three belts, there's the bearing, and you know, these things can let you down. So big front engine kit, 
from me and then you can get in the VIP group, have a look at all the videos or once again, if it's, you know, it's one of those big jobs you're doing once every 150,000 days, that's quite a few years. You might be better off just paying the labor to one of our four before diesel workshop partners and getting that job done professionally, 100% peace of mind. Bada bing, bada boom, timing belt. So, top timing belt mark as demonstrated in other videos. One of my most popular videos. It's a very short one. Shows the 1KZ timing belt mark at the top there. There's also one down on the right side. You can see someone's marked it with orange last time they had it out. We're gonna check this uh, idler bearing here. Uh, the client with this one doesn't wanna just replace everything. It's a matter of check this, check that. So we're about to get that off. That's why the Allen key's on there and check out that bearing. All right, so it's nearly back together. Um, a few key checks on this vehicle. Yeah, we put that silly wire back where it goes. It's not our job to change it. We just removed it out of the way and put it back again. Same as on the battery here, positive wire coming across right near the negative where it could, you know, rub through and uh, burn the car to the ground. So I will be mentioning to the owner something needs to be done about that. Now, this wiring loom, we like to make sure it's got a good clearance so it's not rubbing on the valve cover. Someone has been in this engine before and that's probably why it was rubbing. So we've obviously got it set up so that it's not rubbing. We make sure all those wires are nice and secure and out of the way there. Um, don't forget any of your clamps, uh, obviously, whatever. I don't know what else I can tell you. And uh, soon we'll turn the key on it. And bada bing, obviously the timing belt's done. Happy days. Uh, yeah. Okay, so looks like we've got it all back together. A few final checks. Just to have a visual and look and think and look and think and make sure everything is right and you're happy before you hit the go button. Obviously, if you did the timing belt, you need to, I recommend you um, obviously double check all your marks, but also turn the engine a little bit by hand before you hit the go button. It's always good to triple, double, quadruple check. You can clean or replace your map filter, you know about those, we've got that in other videos. Same on any vehicle really, it's going to be helpful like that. Glow plugs here, yeah, beautiful, look at those babies and the nice new injectors, clamps and everything, everything looks good. Um, look, I can't see any reason here not to uh, hit the go button on this vehicle, so I'll pop the the camera in the tripod and we'll hit the go button. Alright, if uh, I think we're ready to go, I reckon let's hit the go button now and see what happens. Whoa -ho -ho! Beautiful! Beautiful, and that's what a 1KZ sounds like when it's running in Mickey Mouse condition. And you get a little bit of smoke out of them, of course, because it is a 1KZ, it's a different diesel system. They're never going to be as clean as the later diesels, particularly when they're cold. It is a cold engine. We'll have a look at it again once it's warm. Anyway, guys, hopefully you got something out of that. If you did, please remember to give us the thumbs up so we know we're doing the right thing. And please subscribe, turn the bell on. We've got more awesome information, 4x4, Prado, Hilux, diesel, petrol, passenger vehicle videos coming your way. Thanks for watching. Right, well, the engine's warmed up now, so I'm just going to give it a quick start and give it a few small revs to show you how clean a 1KZ should be with the new set of injectors. I don't know about you, but I can't see any smoke. And that's why we use only new, genuine parts and all the correct procedures. All those things was not taking too, enough, too much care. It's always worth taking that much care for a job you're gonna do once every 10 to 15 years.